Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Ogle, Executive Director of Freedom's Frontier National Heritage Area. Welcome to tonight's continuing program on the high sites here in Freedom's Frontier that are part of the National Park Service's Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said that, quote, when nature has work to be done, she creates a genius to do it. Tonight, we're in the presence of such genius. I hope you'll agree with me when tonight's program is complete. A few housekeeping items for you to know as participants and attendees to tonight's program. Our panelists will present for you about the African American Quilt Museum and the programs behind Marla's Quilts. When we finish those presentations, we will allow you, the attendees, to ask questions. Now, there are two ways to ask questions. The first is to click on the question and answer button, usually at the bottom of your screen, and type your question there. I've already received one question, and I hope you'll add to that list. I'll be happy to add those questions for you to our discussion. You can also ask your question on your own. To do so, click to raise your hand. I'll call on you and open up both your audio and video if you want to turn on your camera so you can talk to and see our presenters face to face. So as the mood strikes you, please feel free to ask your questions. Now I'd like to take a moment to share with you about Freedom's Frontier National Heritage Area and our project with the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. Our mission at Freedom Frontier is to tell the stories of the struggles for freedom in our region and their lasting impact on the nation. Now we tell three primary stories the Missouri-Kansas border war, the settling of the frontier, and the enduring struggle for freedom. We represent 41 counties, 29 in Kansas, 12 in Missouri, and are one of the largest national heritage areas in the United States. Our map gives you a great tool to visit those counties, but we've added to those tools by including a National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom tour on our app. Let me share with you a little bit about that app. Sometimes the most important stories aren't widely told. Sometimes what matters the most remains a secret, even if it's right in front of us. There's a place that defined the history of our nation where patriots fighting for freedom gained victories that lasted through the years to secure equal freedoms for all Americans. We're talking about the Freedom's Frontier National Heritage Area. If you didn't know you had such a place around you, the FFNHA app is for you. You'll discover important historic sites and museums, all connected to tell the remarkable stories that shaped our nation. The settlement of the frontier, the border war and civil war, and the enduring struggle for freedom. Thanks to our easy to use app, you'll find tours and amazing places to visit that bring the region together and make it come alive. Visit the App Store or the Google Play Store, download the FFNHA app, and discover the stories that changed a nation. Enjoy the ride. History awaits. Now you can discover Underground Railroad Network Freedom with the new Freedom's Frontier app. As you see here on the screen, we have a special tour right on the front page for the International Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. This tour gives you an overview of all the sites that are involved on the network freedom and gives you an opportunity to collect digital passport stamps. You can collect them all just like you do passport stamps 
available for the passport stamp program from the National Park Service. And here's an example of one of those sites. So I know they're going to want to collect the quilt stamp that is available as well. You can find the FFNHA app in both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. I'm thrilled that today we're going to have an opportunity to visit with, as I said, an extraordinary genius, someone who really brings creativity to these many walls. And as she turns on her camera and opens her microphone, I'm going to be excited to introduce you to her. Good evening, Marla, can you hear me? Yes, I can, good evening, how are you? I am wonderful today, Marla, wonderful. Let me add you to the screen and point out that I know your resume goes on for page after page, but I think something you once shared with me from Faith Rheingold makes the best introduction of you. And I hope you, that this won't make you blush. This is from the foreword that she wrote in 2019. Master quilter Marla Jackson is an artist, curator, activist, as well as the 2018 recipient of our Anyone Can Fly Foundation Celebrated Artist Lifetime Achievement Award as the creator of a groundbreaking body of work that changed the course of art history. Marla creates quilts that tell of heroes often overlooked in American history. Narratives of the Soul Quilted Portraits is a collection of 22 portrait story quilts. In these quilts, Marla blends traditional and modern techniques. She portrays our multifaceted African-American history in quilts, such as Harriet Tubman, Billie Holiday, Ida B. Wells, James Baldwin, Sankofa, The Journey Forward, and Michelle Obama, told using rich color, patterns, and textures. Her traditional techniques include sewing skills her mother taught her, adding stitches of hand embroidery, fabrics from old clothes, adding sequins, buttons, ribbons, hair, and more. Her modern technique is to break away from the traditional square and rectangular quilt shape, reinforcing the fact that these quilts are art and not made just to cover a bin. Quilts are Marla's legacy and tell a history that we can share with our children and with the world for generations to come. I don't know of a better introduction anyone could write on someone's behalf, Marla. Congratulations for the body of work that precipitated that. Welcome tonight and tell us, where are you at this moment? Thank you. I'm at the National African American Quilt Museum and Textile Academy this evening, and I'm trying to keep it together. And this is where you learn visual literacy. I have a program, it's called Beyond the Book, and I had kids from starting eighth grade. At the time, it was Central Junior High, but they changed their name to Lincoln Memorial Central Junior High. And, um, the librarian will refer, will refer kids to me. And we taught, I taught them research, um, how to dye fabrics and, and create art. That's incredible. Can you tell us a little bit about the piece of art we see over your right shoulder? This is a piece of work where, this is the Battle of Titus. I wanna talk about, I wanna take you back to 1856. This is the first Black Lives Matter battle, and it was between uh, Fort Titus was two miles from the Compton, and there are, these are the 53 pro anti-slavery fighting the pro-slavery. And I had an uh, intern, his name was Marvin Crum, and he assisted me with the kids, and I ice dyed this quilt and it just lent itself to be this battle. And it just, and the kids, they took leather, apologized for vegans, but all I had was a coat and they 
made this. So I'm really, this is the first battle. This was it. It was pre-Civil War. Lot Black Lives Matter back then. The battle has still been going on. How is it, Marla, that you, after young people are selected to participate with you, how is it that you engage them to discover this in themselves? First of all, they're leaders, they're interns. They come in with the position of leadership. They're all equal. Everyone is individual and what I do, whatever uh, skill set they have, that's what we work on. Mentorship, whatever they need, I match them. And uh, they're very competitive. We have uh, board meetings, they discuss. Before we approach our art, we research it. I had the privilege of having Judy Sweets, who's a genealogist, and she taught the students how to research like adults. So they said I was the biggest nerd they've ever met, so they tend to enjoy what I do. Oh, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Tell me, you have shared with me in the past as we were talking about this program, you've shared with me a variety of stories of some of these young people and how they were affected by the process. Could you relate one of those stories to us now? Well, sure. I had two young women. They were from um, Ottawa. They were both biracial and had not been exposed to many African-Americans. And I, at that particular time, we were researching on a runaway slave. She wasn't a runaway slave. I apologize. She was stolen. And she was enslaved in Harrisonville, Missouri. She was stolen by Union soldiers. And they researched Maria. And this it was the first time they felt that they could see themselves and identify with such a hero. In the, and they just felt very proud to be an African-American woman for the first time. Well, that's out, outstanding that those experiences affected them in that way. But you worked with folks beyond just some student age along yes. the way. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I um, worked with, I had started a program. It was called the Second Chance Program, where I uh, worked with uh, men coming out of prison, first time felons that taught them how to create art and uh, gave the person the support that was needed. And I um, so proud of him. He started, he's part of a, his own business. He's the owner in Vasi. Um, he has helped with the mass business and um, he's in charge, he's a leader. And I'm just very proud of him. You know, he, uh, my program went to the top of the FBI, you know, because of the quilts being involved and first time finding artistic ability that was within him. He was in a national uh, convention uh, the third national African-American convention. And so I'm just absolutely proud of him and his mentor as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Marla, I'm gonna to try to display something you sent to me that I thought was particularly appropriate for this gathering. And I'm hoping that the gods of Zoom and the like won't fail us here as we try to do this. Um, but I'm attempting to share my, my screen here to show this particular uh, PowerPoint slide. And it shows a mask that you made uh, for the, uh, that showcases the Underground Railroad. Can you talk a little bit about that and tell me, um, I what motivated you? And uh, I already know that our, our, our next guest who will be joining us already said she wants to know how to buy a copy. So <laughs> yeah, tell us I, about this. I saw the fabric 
patch on spoon flour. And I ordered it and I thought it was, it was, I thought the whole piece was all fabric. It was just this little teeny block. And I go, what can I do with that? So I just whipped out some fabric and cut my mask. I have a mask cutter, cut the mask. And I was telling Jim, I spoke to you, I think that Thursday, we had a conversation. I said, Jim, I'm going to make a mask. He says, you are? I said, yeah, I'm going to make a mask. You'll see it. So I cut it up and arranged it. And I just wanted to make sure that Missouri, all every the counties lined up and we talk about the $200 award that was on the slave and here's Harriet Tugman over here. I can't see very good without my glasses, but I just well, loved it. And I called you up. I said, Jim, I sent, no, I sent it to you in an email to, to surprise you. But uh, I could just do, you know, it's just exciting to me. History, because you can go back you can go back and you could, you know, you can just, maybe you didn't see something in the first time. Maybe my perspective may be a little bit different from someone that is Caucasian, from what I, how I view history. And, um, you know, it's just like the characters, I call my characters and that are in my work, you know, my heroes. And um, it's okay for me to talk about that. That's that's wonderful. Okay, well, I'm, well, I'm and I'm going to relate it to 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 21st century because there's nothing new under the sun. Black Lives Matter leader in 18, 1850, I think his name's John Brown. He was the leader. Anthony Copeland, Shields Green, Harper's Ferry, the 21 men, my heroes. You know Harriet Tubman. Definitely. Harriet. Amen to that. Amen to that. Thank, got, you. Thank you. Now, go, go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted. You got one in Lawrence right now. She'll go down as a hero. She'll go down as the John Brown of Lawrence, Kansas, the Jane Brown. Her name is Natasha Neal. Passionate for what she believes in. Passionate for the truth. She reminds me of John Brown. No stopping. All right. Well, thank you, Marla. Now, I want to add someone to our discussion. We, I know that um, you have long been be blessed as having a a collaborator in Susan Earle, who serves as the curator of European and American art at the Spencer Museum of Art at the University of Kansas. Now, at KU, she's also an affiliate faculty in art history, museum studies, and women's studies. And at the Spencer Museum, Dr. Earle has commissioned both local and international artists to make new work. She's also published two books, and organized more than 50 exhibitions, including half a dozen that she co-created with you. In another partnership with you, I believe between 2017 and 2019, Earl helped to organize the aspects of the National African American Quilt Convention. Now, Susan's a native of New York City, but has lived in Lawrence for 26 years. Susan, it's great to have you with us, and um, I am excited to uh, be able to have you join us and to share some slides along the way uh, with folks here today. So if you would, uh, take it away, Susan. Thank you, Jim, for the lovely introduction. And Marla, thank you so much for talking about your work one of the great pleasures for me of living in Lawrence and working at the Spencer has been with Marla. It's, it's a relationship that just, it sustains me on a daily basis. And can you hear me okay? I'm having slight internet troubles. Can you hear me all We're right? Okay. I, okay. I, I, I can hear you clearly. 
and um, I think you're finding that internet may come and go, but nothing will stop the truth. So you keep right on moving. Okay, thank you. So Marla and I, I think we started working together in 2006 when we approached her about uh, Aaron Douglas. We were organizing a major exhibition that became a national touring exhibition of the work of Aaron Douglas, who was born in Topeka in 1899. And Marla created in response to thinking about uh, Aaron Douglas's ideas, she created the quilt that you see here now, Sankofa, which is a really substantial statement um, out of her life and her history. And it became, it was shared as a solo exhibition of her work within uh, the Aaron Douglas exhibition. It wasn't able to tour, but that, um, that was a major part of the project and all that she contributed to that, including interviews and, and many aspects of it. And then uh, Marla had been working for some time, as she mentioned in her Beyond the Book program, working with children in the area. So she worked, she's worked with fourth graders um, in Topeka and middle school students here in Lawrence at uh, what's now Liberty Memorial Central Middle School. So this was the first project that we did together. This is in the Spencer. This is Galleries in the Spencer. This was Visual Voices in 2009. And uh, this is the view of it. The second view there that um, Jim is nicely showing shows you the individual quilts that the children made, which are just, I mean, what a knockout these are. And this is all due to Marla and how she inspires people, how she um, gets them to tell their own stories, teaches them history, um, and then they create these amazing quilts. So that was that project in 2009. And then the next one, a year later, there was another project um, that was inspired by the work of, uh, you can go to the next slide there, Jim. Um, the work of Richard Wright, the incredible author. And so this one, the collaboration expanded and this was one where Marla started working. Yeah, we'll stay on this one for a second. So she was working with Michelle Loomis, award-winning English teacher from Central Middle School. And then as well for this one. And also uh, Joan Wilson uh, at the National Park Service, the Brown versus Board of Education National Historic Site in Topeka. Um, so Marla would go into Central Middle School and work with the children there. And in this case, um, we're still on this one for a second, um, Jim, thank you. Uh, the other aspects of this was that uh, Professor Mary Emma Graham at KU applied for and received uh, a, na a National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Institute grant. So she worked with school teachers and graduate students on the topic of Richard Wright. And they studied his books um, for several weeks in July. And then we put on this project at the Spencer that Marla had done with Michelle Loomis and Joan Wilson and several children, we show their quilts here. So they took, this was Mar all Marla's brilliant genius idea. They chose a haiku poem by Richard Wright. So each one of these quilts that you see was made by a different um, student working with Marla and inspired by a poem by Richard Wright, a haiku poem. So those all appear here on the labels and we had this up uh, for a couple of months over the summer in 2010. Marla, I don't know if there's anything you wanna jump in and add about this, but. I think it was the proudest moment. It's just every, you know, just each each kid, it was just amazing. And they see, I see the kids, we still have our quilts. So, so they still have them. I mean, I could read you some of the testimonials. I will um, for 
uh, for the next one, I'm going to read you one of them um, about the process of working with them. So this was 2000. So next, the next year in 2011, we did something every summer because Marla was so busy all year working with the Central Junior High, now Liberty Memorial Central Middle School children. She would go into the classes and the art classes and Michelle Loomis's English classes and work with the children and then everyone wanted to be there. I had the, the great honor of, of being there for one of them. And I can tell you the excitement of the children in the room was just palpable. And these are kids that weren't always that interested in some of the other things they studied, but they just totally came alive with the presence of Marla and, and Michelle supporting it with her teaching. And it was just extraordinary. So this one, um, okay, so we're the first color troops of Kansas. Uh, was also a really important one. So this is what you see here. This is the quilt that the children made. And that's a detail of it. And you'll see that in this case, there are three dimensional elements, which are all sometimes true as well in Marla's quilts and other um, narrative quilts. So you can see the little shovels and the, um, the bags there and the, um, the sticks that represent the, the part of what the soldiers were doing, incredibly creative uh, work that the children did, learning about this, uh, a group within the first colored troops of Kansas. And then they produced this collaborative quilt together. Um, in the exhibition, we also included some of Marla's quilts that were on uh, related topics. Uh, so she's done an amazing job also of integrating her own work with uh, what she teaches the children. But in all, in each of these cases, we gave the children, thanks to Marla and her idea, um, the opportunity to exhibit their work as fourth graders or seventh, eighth, or ninth graders in the Spencer Museum. So either a collaborative one like this or the individual ones. Susan, the, the uh, uh, gods of uh, transition and display keep advancing these slides, and I keep switching <laughs> them back, so my apologies uh, for them constantly urging you on onward, um, but that's why these keep advancing, and I keep trying to send them back on you, so go right ahead. Thank you, Jim, for explaining that. That's, it's good to know sometimes the electronic stuff has a mind of its own. So this next project, uh, the, a year later, 2012, we sure were busy, Marla. Uh, the, the, the Ray of Hope, Aaron Douglas inspired quilts and murals. And this was a case where these quilts that you see right now, um, about this size generally, these, those were made by the fourth grade students at a magnet school in Topeka. And then the um, middle school children at Central Middle School made a mural painting. And you see that in the other slide that, that sometimes keeps jumping back and forth between them. So this was uh, Aaron Douglas continuing to be an inspiration um, in Topeka. He is still to this day. Uh, he inspired Marla and really inspired these children um, in very creative ways. So I have to read you one, uh, one of the children uh, who worked on this, Kenyon Bell, uh, who has been a pillar of this community and his family. So he worked on the mural. So there are two slides in the alternate uh, picture that shows uh, the mural paintings that the older kids made. He said, I based my image on hope and freedom. I adapted some techniques similar to the style of Aaron Douglas, such as the broad, proud, black human figures, the circles of light and the beam of hope. I was fascinated with Aaron Douglas's work and wanted to make something inspired by him. Marla Jackson and Mrs. Joan Wilson helped us on the project and working with them was a fantastic experience. They taught us how to have fun with our artwork and to do things the way we wanted to do them. They taught us the importance of learning most of all. 
each of the children wrote a similar kind of statement about their process of working with Marla. I mean, that's the incredible, one of the amazing things she does. She not only inspires them to make this work, but she gives them a voice. She has them write up a statement about what they did and share what inspired them. And it's just quite something. Um, so after this, that, those were the four exhibitions that we did with groups of children. Following this, again, a year later, uh, so those are the murals that uh, Kenyon Bell and others per uh, participated in. Um, if you can get back to it, Jim, there's still a couple more images. Uh, so in 2013, Marla worked again with a group of um, middle school children and they created a quilt together based on uh, Quantrill's raid. Uh, one large quilt, it is, um, it's like eight by 11 feet. We've shown it now several times at the Spencer and several children created that together working with uh, Marla. And that one is called Still We Rise. So there is a picture of a gym if you are able to get back to it. Um, and that was one where Kenyon Bell participated in that as also. And then there are eight other or seven or eight other children um, who were part of that uh, making of that quilt. And that one is now uh, great. Thank you, Jim. That was just perfect. Thank you. That one is in the collection of the Spencer Museum of Art, all, along with Marla's Sankofa and her quilt, Firstborn, uh, which was a gift from her son. Uh, so this is the one, Still We Rise, that the children made together. Uh, really amazing. And this was included then in the next project we did together, which was on an even bigger scale, uh, Narratives of the Soul. The name of that exhibition is Marla's name. She suggested it to us. So this is in the Spencer Museum. Some of the others that you saw were in the Spencer galleries before we renovated. This is in the newly renovated uh, Central Court in the Spencer. And this project was really Marla's idea. We did this together. We took a major touring exhibition uh, that was in the other galleries, but in this space, um, those are Marla's quilts. So in the, the slide, the part of it on the left, you see Sankofa, and then in the center is Firstborn that I just mentioned. Next to that is Nedra Bond's quilt um, on jazz. And then in the other slide, you see around our piano, Marla's quilt is right behind those figures. There are four figures that were created by Sarah Bunn, who lives in New York City. And Marla brought Sarah to us. She found her work. She brought her here. Uh, amazing work that she does. Those have to do with what's now uh, Central Park in New York City, but that used to be uh, land and buildings and schools that were all um, part of uh, African-American life and property ownership in the middle of New York City that then was stolen from them. And then you see Faith Ringgold's amazing flag story quilt uh, on the wall behind them. Uh, Mar this was part of the inaugural National African-American Quilt Convention in July of 2017, which if some of you were here for it, was really an experience. It was transformative for this community. So many artists came. I mean, Marla just has a galvanizing effect on people. She inspired hundreds of artists. It, it was just an extraordinary gathering. And we were so fortunate that they came to the opening event at the Spencer Museum. Uh, Faith Ringgold, who's another treasure just a treasure. She's getting a lot of attention uh, worldwide at the moment. She's been around for a long time. She's been making work uh, for decades. Um, and uh, Marla and Faith, if you can show that, if you're able to show the next slide, Jim, Faith came and spoke at the Lead Center. There they are, the two of them. <laughs> two geniuses, just really amazing. Um, 
what, what an extraordinary experience it was. The exhibition that, that Marla, really, she conceptualized so much of it. It was, a, it was a true collaboration where the Spencer borrowed work and we had work from the collection and Marla and I really did all of it together and put it on in that amazing space. And then Marla got Faith to come here and give a talk, which was just extraordinary. And then she came again the following year um, but look at the two of them. I mean, just so much creativity represented there. And then the following year in 2018, we did another exhibition as part of the National African American Quilt Convention that was an homage to Faith Ringgold, who came to speak again. And it was, again, Marla's idea to have men uh, be the focus of it. So uh, really, it's African American women, Marla leading the charge, um, storytelling quilters, narrative quilting, who have transformed, as Jim said, or Faith Ringgold said, uh, the history of modern art and American art. And uh, they are really the leaders, but some men have made a wonderful kind of homage uh, to them and to Faith Ringgold. So that was the focus of that exhibition in 2018. The year later, Marla uh, did more of that uh, convention, quilt convention in Kansas City. So um, our, the last time uh, we did an exhibition for it was the next, the, the next image, if you're able to show it, Jim. Uh, it's hard to leave that behind, the one of uh, Qu Faith and Marla. I could just look at that all day. The two of you are just... So this was the one of uh, celebrating the diversity of men in quilts. So these were Marvin Crum and William Daniels, um, and uh, Leo Ran uh, Ransom from Texas and several others who all were paying homage really to, um, to the tradition that Marla's work so brilliantly represents and specifically also Faith Ringgold. So I'm not sure where we're gonna go next, Marla, but I'm sure we have another project in the works, so. Yeah, we got something cooking. Wonderful, <laughs> Susan, thank you, thank you. Marla, could you take a moment and just talk about the um, importance of uh, faith uh, to you and your relationship with her? I tell you, she's my family. She inspired me. She said, little girl, you make me tired. She says, you're like Martin Luther King. You took the blows and got back up, didn't you? How many got in your way? You knocked them down. You didn't take no for an answer. She says, little girl, had you been in New York, we would have had our black museum by now. Our own in New York, had you been there. She says, where's your book? I said, Faith, I don't think I'm good enough to be in a book. She says, you got six months. To get a book. Gracie will help you. She'll tell you where to start. And I said, are you sure, Faith? She says, little girl, anybody can fly. But Faith, you didn't tell me I can soar. That's wonderful. Self-published my book, Faith. And it's available, I think, Wednesday. And it's because of you. And we have a Apologize. copy of that cover up for everyone to see. Um, uh, and we will be sharing with them, everyone who attended tonight, the flyer that will tell them about the book and how to order it. So it it's certainly been a wonderful experience. I want to open it up now. We've had a couple of questions come in that I would like to share. And um, Marla, the first of those questions, one, did patterns on the quilts direct people to the Underground Railroad at the, back in the day? I have no knowledge of that to verify, to verify that. I know that's an oral history and I'm not saying, I'm not denying any oral history, but I'm a researcher. I need some facts. You got to show me or direct me, but I'm not sure. I cannot answer that question 100% and feel like I, I'm accurate. 
Excellent. And uh, what do you see as the next step forward for what you're doing with the quilts? Do you have other youth projects uh, in the works? What we're doing now, my, I have uh, two students right now and we're making, we, we, in order to survive the pandemic, we reduced, we gave up two of our galleries. So we have one gallery, but it's big enough for a museum and it's big enough for a mass company. And we're gonna teach sublimation. We're gonna teach them how to use the cricket. And so some new technology, uh, I'm, I was just awarded, I was awarded a grant from Douglas County Health Department. And my goal is I know the black community has always taken care of itself and its family. My, I feel like Harriet Tugman sitting in the chair with the shawl around her. I've gotten old now. I can't go out and protest. But if you're going to, I want you to come and get a mask. I got masks for you and protect yourselves. So that's my goal is to keep people safe. That's my